Welcome to the SimTable Scenario and Layer Management Update Tutorial. The new settings tool can be used to manage scenarios, progressions, and multiple types of geospatial data on a SimTable device. The Device Settings menu has four main tabs, Scenarios, Progressions, Layers, and Advanced. In this video, we will focus on the first three. The Scenarios tab lets users select which scenarios appear in the main menu, delete old scenarios, and manage layers associated with each scenario. The Favorites toggle lets users decide which scenarios appear in the table menu. Select the Trash icon to delete older or unused scenarios. This action cannot be undone, so use with caution. Associated layers will appear by clicking on the scenario. We will cover more about associating layers later in the video. Ensure you save any changes by selecting Save All. Your progression library can be managed by selecting the Progressions tab. You can remove existing progressions from the menu by toggling the Favorite icon off. You can add progressions by searching for a specific progression in the search bar or by scrolling through the list. Users can also associate layers with progressions, which we'll cover later in the video. Ensure you are saving your work when making changes in the settings page. The Layers tab is where users can manage their GIS layers. Under the KML and GeoJSON tab, users can manage their vector GIS data. You can edit layer names and the order of their appearance in the menu. Upload your layers from the device by finding the selected layers on your device. Toggle Favorite on or off to have layers appear in the layer menu on the table. Again, ensure you save your progress when uploading or modifying items in the settings page. Raster data in the form of georeferenced JPEGs or georeferenced PDFs can also be uploaded to the table. Here users can modify raster layer names in the list and upload new rasters. When uploading, set the opacity of the raster between 0.0, .0 and 1.0 with a smaller number indicating greater transparency. The Favorite toggle will make these layers appear in the main layer menu on the table, or the layer can be associated with a scenario or progression. Web mapping service layers and slippy map layers can also be added to your table. As with all layers, you can check visibility by clicking the eye icon and again, make sure you save any changes. A complete list of layers of all formats is available within the All Layers tab. You can change the order of the data, but note that the default setting places vector data over raster data.
To associate layers with a scenario or progression, click on the desired scenario or progression and select any layers you want to automatically load with that scenario. Associated layers will appear in the Scenario Layer menu on the table until the association is removed from the scenario or progression. Note, associated layers will also appear in the clipboard application. Favorited layers can be selected from the device layer menu on the table. For this scenario, we have included power line vector data and georeferenced PDF maps of slope and integrated hazards to provide context for fuels treatment planning. We can incorporate detailed fire history layers and see fire events at the local level. Treatment area polygons can be integrated and fuels modified to reflect those treatments. These polygons now have a reduced fuel profile that can be used in training scenarios or in community outreach and education workshops. Layers associated with scenarios or progressions will appear in the scenario layer list. The recently released Hermit's Peak Fire progression can be played back over the incident maps for an after action review. Phase 1 ravage data indicating burn severities can be viewed as an overlay with the progression to better understand the timing and impact of significant fire behavior and growth. Public information maps can be shown across the SIM table landscape to inform communities of a fire status and location and to support early and complete evacuation planning. The ability for users to curate and present data on the 3D landscape is a powerful resource for public information officers working to convey past, present, and expected fire spread to stakeholders at all levels.